Welcome to this video where I will show my game which I played against Grandmaster Ferenc Berkes in the first round of the Budapest Spring Festival. I am participating in the Budapest Spring Festival which is also the Open Hungarian Championship. Actually around 350 players for, from 35 countries participating. There are A group B group and C group. I play in the A group as you can see we have a few players over 2600 like four players over 2600 another couple of like another 16 player over 2500 more than 20 grandmasters altogether 210 players plays in the A group and I am number 106 by my rating my first round opponent was Grandmaster Ferenc Berkes from Hungary. He is an eight-time Hungarian chess champion. He was also World Under-18 champion. And one of his best recent results, he got in the best 16 in the Chess World Cup in 2023. Let's go for the game. I played with the white pieces and yeah, when I saw the pairings, I started to think what opening to play. Play e4, c4, d4. And I remembered he also plays d4 and plays the London system. So I see what about playing the system which he plays himself. Because most of the time, People don't like to play against their own system, so I decided to start with d4. Yeah, here he took his time and played knight f6, but especially after bishop f4 he was thinking around maybe 4 or 5 minutes to what to do, to go to with d5 to the main line, but actually he decided to play b6, one of the challenging systems against the London system. because. Black is still very open, he can still later play d5, once he can still play e6 or g6. I decided to continue normally, I played c3 to strengthen the center. Bishop b7, knight d2, d6. It looks like he prefers to play later e5. I played knight gf3, knight bd7, h3. Yeah, I was ready to go back with the bishop if knight h5 may happen. g6, e3, bishop g7, bishop c4. Yeah, here I was thinking to put the bishop to e2, d3 or c4. But I decided to play this kind of provocative move because if he plays d5, I will just go back. But I would be happy if he plays d5, blocks his own bishop. Also kind of sometimes returning to capture here. Just castled. I also castled played c5 to challenge my center, bishop h2, again this is kind of like a preventing move, prophylactic move, I, I just wanted to avoid this knight h5 or knight d5 tempo moves or e5 and see what how he will react. I will change my strategy, okay d5, I went back to e2, yeah bishop d3 was also an option, e6, this was a little surprise surprise for me but yeah he probably wanted just to develop the queen i played a4 it's a typical good move against this structure to try to exchange the middle pawn so the others will be kind of disconnected queen e7 play knight e5 yeah also th this is normally a good square for a knight when there's pawns in the center blocking each other then those squares you can use as an outpost Actually, a5 was a, another good move to continue my original plan after a4. Yeah, probably I should have played this one. It's a little bit better, I think, than knight e5. Played knight e5. Actually, he played a6 to be ready if a5, then b5. Queen b3, developing my queen. Knight takes e5, eliminating my strong centerless knight. Knight d7 again challenging my nice bishop. Exchange the bishops on g bishop takes g7, queen takes g7. Knight f3. 
I just wanted to control the center. Knight f3, bishop c6. Queen a3. Yeah, it's an interesting move. Yeah, it's actually I'm pinning the pawn, the c5 pawn, so he cannot be pushed or captured. Plus, in some cases, I prefer to play b4 to add some more pressure. Actually, yeah, and they played immediately a5 to prevent that one. I went back to b3 actually. I was thinking to attack this pawn on b6. This now became a backward pawn, plus this b5 square also a weak square. So I planned actually to put their bishop, and if it changed, then capture back with the queen. Rook a b8, yeah, defending the pawn. Rook f e1. Yeah, in the future, if things are open up, I plan to play e4. Rook fd8, bishop b5. Just following the original idea why I played queen b3. Queen d6, defended actually the bishop, exchanged, exchanged back. Queen a3. Okay, so the idea is to play again b4. Rook b7. And I just played b4. And actually here, previously I thought about capture, capture like in the game and playing c4, but somehow I thought, okay, this will be just nice because I can block this pawn and maybe I can push this forward, but I just totally forward, uh, forgot about the circumstance. He can very quickly double the rooks and a4 will be pinned. So actually I cannot play a5, I should play b5, which I did. Yeah, rest respect, maybe I would probably not play b4 if because, yeah, I just would like to uh, prevent him to get like this defended pass pawn. Here I could just play just a natural move, something like maybe rook d1 and waiting, and this would be a totally fine game. Okay, I played b4, capture, capture, b5, c4, I played b5. So, just to block the queen, so he will not be able to attack the a4 pawn. And uh, he can attack only two times with the rook, so I will be able to time defend. Actually, I can also double the rook, so if if he also de develops defend, decides to triple the on the a5. Queen c7, queen b4. Yeah, I just wanted to go out of this file. Well, I was sure he will come with the rook. And here comes an important maneuver. Yeah, rook a3 first, just to be ready to double if necessary. Plus also avoiding this pawn push, queen d8. And here comes a really important and nice maneuver. But this is a strong pawn, strong defended pass pawn. I decided to block it. So I moved knight d2, knight f6, knight b1, and knight c3. So I think this is an important maneuver to block the pawn, support maybe f in the future to e3, e4, push, push, also defends both pawns. So I actually now I can even re reposition my rook somewhere else, because the knight will just solve the challenge at his own. h4, so yeah, he gained some space on the king's side. This can be some, some plans for himself in the future to try to make like a pawn storm. Rook a b1, rook b a7, rook a2, yeah, here I realized actually, if I play e4, that's probably after the changes because my d4 pawns, so I cannot really play that. I'm ready. To, I would be happy to play a5, exchange those pawns, and then have this d b5 pass pawn. But he blocked that, so looks like here the position kind of blocked, and we both cannot do much. Yeah, actually, he also makes so many waiting moves. So queen c7, queen b2, queen d6. Uh, that's a question was always if I want to exchange the queens or not. Yeah, I decided to keep the queens. Probably exchanging the queens would be also fine because then the king can also come to for the blockade. So that would be prob probably also pretty close to equal. Queen e2, yeah, maybe some. Yeah, time to time I was thinking to push actually the e pound to get some activity, but yeah, always I thought, okay, this is just probably the best to keep things here how they are. So it's not, all, not not realistic to go for a win, it's more like I need to keep the balance because that's actually, that would backfire if I play. As later in the game, actually in the end game I played e4 which backfired. 
rook a5, rook d1, queen b4, okay, defend the knight with queen c2, rook c8, rook b1 forcing back the queen, queen b2, queen c7, rook e1, yeah again this e4, <laughs> e4 plan may comes my, in my mind time to time, yeah, all the time it's, it's, it's a possibility. Rook c a8, queen b4, rook 5 to a7, rook e to a1, coming back, queen d8, rook a3, king g8, yeah it looks like he also just waiting for me to do something but but yeah, he also don't want to play like e5 or g5. Rook a2, king h7, rook e1, king g8, rook a1, knight e. Okay, and here starts the new maneuver, so I decided to do something, change the knight's position. Rook e1, yeah, I, I still think about e4, but yeah, knight d6. Yeah, just again waiting, queen b2, rook c8. Rook a e1, king g7, queen e2. Yeah, time to time maybe go forward with the with the queen. Also, I realize probably he wants to come with the knight f5, queen g5, and try to attack here something, or sac sacrifice maybe the knight here with the idea of double attacking. So I just came with the queen to defend. King f8, queen g4, maybe an attacking move, knight f5, rook a3, queen d6. Queen e2 just going back, rook a5, rook a2, queen c7, queen c2, rook c8, rook b1. It looks like nothing happening, but yeah, we are both waiting for the opponent to do something. So this is maneuvering, just waiting for the opponent if, if they will make a mistake or he will make a mistake or not. Queen e7, queen e2, queen g5, rook d1. So you see there are some advance for himself. Yeah, this is also always a possibility to play something like uh, Queen G4 to ch offer the change and this would be probably also fine. The exchange the queen endgame without the queens should be also pretty close to equal. Rook D1, Knight D6, Rook A1, Queen F5. Rook d1, yeah, I just I didn't want to allow him to come in. Even that would be probably not a problem because after the exchanges, uh, this pawn would fall. Okay, knight e4. As you see here already, we played 60 moves. Actually, he, yeah, the clocks were around the uh, same. Maybe I had actually like a few minutes advantage around. I had, I think, around 20 minutes. My opponent had like maybe 15 minutes. Or, so he decided to change the structure, so exchanging the knights, capture, capture. And I, I decided to move the pawn f3, queen f5, and until here it would be probably everything fine. And I think here I made a mistake because, um, yeah, here I just need to probably continue to defend this pawn and play without much activity. Yeah, queen d3 was not a problem actually, this was m one of my little fear, this is why I played e4, but I capture, capture, and I can just come with the king, and if he, let's say he gets to the fight, then I can, yeah, still, I actually just go and, and attack the pawn. Yeah, it's actually, you cannot do too much here. Uh, let's make Mm, yeah, I can do like this. Attacks, yeah, I just capture. Actually, you need to be also careful because I may be quicker to make a pass bomb. So I did not uh, believe in this one, so also it was low on time, so I... And actually, I was thinking may maybe this is a good time for some activity, so I played e4. But actually, this is backfired because actually after e4, d4 pawn became a weakness in the future. Plus, these squares became available for the queen. Here, queen f4 would be even a little better than queen g5 because this would be also attacked, and those threats are both possible. 
but he played queen g5 okay I defended the pawn rook d8 I defended rook d1 yeah I just did not feel the danger so that's why I played e4 plus somehow I hoped he will capture and then I can play like e4 but yet but smartly he is waiting for the capture only when this would be really go good for him because after the capture I may certainly him to play d5 played queen f4 king h1 yeah I wanted to go out of the possible checks king g7 rook a3 rook d e8 rook d e rook d a1 yeah just attack defended ah uh, yeah actually I did not realize there is a nice threat here which, which yeah I missed and, and this is one of the reasons why this uh, e4 was a mistake because it's opened up the diagonal maybe if you want uh, you can stop the video here and try to find a good move for black so the good move is actually sacrificing the rook on b5 white has uh, some options actually can capture that or can capture i uh, capture on d5 actually this is the only and the good move I capture the problem captures on a3 recapture and here black can win back the rook maybe you can again stop the video if you want and find the right move for black so queen c1 a double attack king captures captures taking on d5 and originally i was thinking to play this one because if it captures back then with this check I can capture back actually the pawn and attacking I was even I can be even better <laughs> but then before I made the move I realized it was a very good intermediate move this check which is preventing also queen e5 and to taking so white is pound down down the pawn white uh, so black has an extra pawn very strong queen so black is just winning here so this is the reason why I not take it but I said okay I will capture first you look and and if he captures now then I will I will I can do the same stuff <laughs> you know check he wins back but again coming this ch check myself and now I am fine but uh, unfortunately instead of taking with the power he can take with the rook I captured on c4 captured on d4 so black is up a pawn but this pawn is not a passed pawn we also exchanged pawns he has no more passed pawn we both have one weak pawn so this is I think pretty close to equal still after all these exchanges but at, around this time we were like down one minute both so yeah this started to be really challenging to find the right moves I played queen b3 yeah this was not the right move queen c6 was the best to just attack the pawn and attack the rook in the same time yeah I was think fearing this move with this checkmate threats but I could play rook g1 rook d1 and then rook a1 to defend the back rank and this would be actually pretty good chance for a draw so I played queen b3 instead then rook c8 yeah here rook b4 was a little better move for him also to defend the b6 pawn in the same time and keep the attack going on but rook c8 was instead again rook g1 not the best move it's a kind of little passive uh, I looked at other uh, option which was queen to d3 offering the exchange of the queens probably blocking the rook capture capture yeah, again back rank danger but actually he cannot really use it so this would be also pretty pretty close to to equal So I decided to play actually rook g1, rook c1. Yeah, he could play also like e5, try to start to push the pawns. Rook c1 defended, rook b4, queen a2. Yeah, I needed to stop this rook c2, doubling the rooks on the second rank. Okay, king g1 was necessary. Check king h1 rook b2 rook a3 and here came a like, little bit of a surprising move but a nice move 
Yeah, I was thinking to capture or not to capture, you know. I can capture and then takes, takes, queen d4. So we got a queen and game with an extra pawn, but I was thinking probably he knows it's better, so maybe this is just good for black. And after the game, actually, he said he wrote a chess a book about the queen's end game, and he mentioned also like a classical game where black won with the idea of try to come with the king and later winning this pawn. Interesting, the, the machine see, thinks this is equal. I did not go with a deep analysis, so I'm not sure if maybe later will be some changes in the evolution, but maybe this was actually a chance for a draw for me to go to this end game, but actually pretty hard to make the all the defensive moves, even if it's uh, equal. So I, I found the queen a2, which keeping the rooks, and I was thinking maybe that gives more hope. I would be more likely to like to go with the rook end game actually without, so rook maybe four against three than, than with the, to the queen end game. So queen a2, queen c3, rook g1, yeah I just went back to defend, rook a3, queen f2, counter-attacking, queen b2, queen b4, queen c2. Yeah, interesting end games was a few but cannot take it because then with the check I would just uh, win back the pawn. Because if captures, then I can, I think, do this move. Attack the queen. Yeah, and actually, yeah, I can just win, win back the pawn. So queen c2, rook b3, rook a1 is still a good move, rook b2. Yeah, and here came my losing move, actually. Very long time, under one minute. I just missed another rook capture. So here I should just go back with the queen here. I need, need to protect the rook, it's important to protect the rook. Yeah, after e5, you know, black is better, but it's not, it's very hard. It's objectively equal, but it's kind of hard to defend also with white. So I play queen b2. Here you can stop again the video and find the right move for black to win a pawn. Rook takes g2, yeah, I missed this one. Rook takes g2, king takes g2. If I capture with the king, then there would be again a nice move. Please maybe stop the video and try to find the right move for black. Queen b2 check, yeah, it's a double attack to win back the, the rook. Okay, here I decided to move, make my last trick. Rook b1, intermediate move attacking the queen. If the queen moves, I can take the rook. But yeah, I actually can also move here to d to protect the rook, or the move which he made was good. Rook takes b2, so rook b2 to to defend the rook and the queen at the same time. And here I decided to exchange exchange the rooks because otherwise my king became so weak, so that would be really hopeless with the rooks on the board, because that attack against my king. But yeah, he has two extra pounds and he will show quickly how to win it. Queen e4, queen c1 check. King g2, queen g5 check, king f1, and now and starting to push the pawns e5, queen c6, queen e3, queen g2, and actually here again there is like a series of moves to win a, another pawn. Yeah, if you have one a little puzzle, just stop the video and calculate. This takes like four moves. So starting with queen e2 check, queen g1, queen e1 check, back, and queen g3 check, double attacks. And he actually wins one more pawn, so I resigned the game. So I think one of the critical moves for here, the e4, to play or not to play, so sometimes it's better to just uh, keep the balance and uh, defend passively or just uh, not attack and or and because all the attacking moves also creates weaknessing when you move a pawn up that's that's uh, will not defend the two squares which are already defended so always keep in mind if the attacking move is giving more advantages than disadvantages plus tactics yeah several times are blundered in this game the double attacks so always looking for sacrifices yeah, and 
keep your time yeah if you can have them try to keep a time advantage because in both cases actually i start to be low on time that when i i blunder those uh, double attacks okay guys hope you enjoy this video yeah i will fight hard tomorrow in round two so see you tomorrow bye bye